Hello, my name is Lorraine of District 32. I'm really, really excited to be here again with Dinesh Agarwal of Fortuna Advisory Group. How are you, Dinesh? I'm very well, thanks, Lorraine. And yourself? Yeah, I'm exceptionally well, thank you. And I love doing these um, interviews and I love doing them with yourself because I always, it doesn't matter how much you know in business, you always come away with something new, right? Yeah, uh, that's how the business world is. You're learning on a continuous basis and every t- every time I spoke, you have another sort of, uh, have another conversation, you're a little bit more wiser and you're able to share <laughs> more wise thought. <laughs> that's right. Every day a little bit wiser. I like that. Um, yeah. gets through the day as entrepreneurs. So look, today we're talking about scaling the business and capital raising. And this yeah. is the point that every business um, owner at some point is thinking about, whether it's at the start or the end, <laughs> um, scaling the business or capital raising of some form. So uh, as I was saying to you just before, I was speaking to someone this morning who's looking for um, capital raising and uh, your name was thought of. So um, you're becoming, you're very well known and respected in your industry, um, Dinesh. So thank you for spending your time with us um, today. Thank you. It's good to know that. Now, I've got a few questions here that I would love to ask you because I like to get into the nitty gritty of these things. But in scaling the business, a business owner thinks, you know, I'm just going to grow. I'm just going to get more customers. I'm going to do the same thing, you know. But how does a customer go from a business go from growing their customer base to scaling the business you know what are the most important things that we have to be considerate of when thinking about scaling our businesses yes yeah, so uh, there's there are many important aspects to be considered Lorraine, when, when you're starting a new business or or scaling an existing business but let me uh, focus on sort of three um, most important elements for, for the purpose of this discussion so the first critical element, of course, is capital. You know, obviously cash is king, right? So, so we can't really do anything unless we have funds behind us to ramp up our operation. And um, capital is, is always a major bottleneck for any startup or, or any business in a growth phase. And, and typically access to, to capital can be challenging, particularly, particularly for startups as they don't have a have a history of a successful business operation behind them. Uh, they have to prove their business concept, discipline uh, in the business, the model, the plan to make a success a successful business venture. And on the other hand, the existing businesses are, uh, are they're still a little bit in a better position sometimes as they can get, gain investor confidence based on their existing financial results. Uh, or can approach the banks for business loans, which typically is very hard in startup uh, type of environment. So, but the whole process needs to be managed in a very smart way. You need to make sure you have a constant focus on on your financial figures and the ratios of the business. Uh, you need to make sure you have the control on the pulse of your business. At the, at the end of the day, it's the healthy numbers that is going to attract the funding, whether in the form of a capital raise uh, by attracting investors or you go to the bank for, for some sort of loans. So that's one. Uh, the second thing is um, the resources, So, which is again very critical in any business growth journey. Um, uh, you know, whether it's human resources, whether it's the partnership with your suppliers of the business, the, the plant and equipment you're going to use. De- and depending on, on the nature of your business and um, each one of those elements can play an important role in its own proportion. Um, uh, but if you're not able to deliver to your customers what you promise, you lose their confidence. And, and the whole delivery mechanism is an outcome of, of the right resources you have in your business. So, and the third thing is, of course, planning, which is definitely a very significant element as as really directs us where we want to go. Um, it furnishes the direction and, and decreases any danger of risk um, by making by making the prediction. So some um, some some of the other advantages of having the right planning strategies is de- you know it decreases any overlapping and wasteful wasteful activities and it encourages the innovative ideas as you as you go through the planning process uh, and helps in in the decision making as well. So in short you know, the whole planning process will bridge the gap between where we are as a business owner at present and where we want to go and go in the future. 
So to sum up yet, the three critical elements in the whole scaling process, capital, the resource, right resourcing, and, and the planning. Okay. So can I ask you a few questions there? And I get asked, you know, I ask these questions, um, you know, regularly. So if we're going to grow the business and we're going to scale the business, you know, why isn't it, why doesn't it work that we just get more customers to get more money and that money will allow us to grow? Why do we always need this extra bundle of capital um, that's, that's, that's sitting there? Why is it that so often business owners don't end up with that? you know, bundle of capital there and therefore they need to make themselves um, attractive to, to investors or bankers to give them some capital to grow. Well, what is that that usually happens? So it's that sort of continuous cycle of um, starting as a very small enterprise to then going into that scaling up phase. So you could just, um, you know, have, have a startup, an idea where as a sole trader and as a sole owner of the business, you you start somewhere, but you need to have some basic level of savings, maybe even to set up your website, online sort of digital presence and marketing. So there's some seed capital or, you know, you need just it, it, depending on the nature of the business. And if it's, if it's a service based business, it would need minimum. You just, you know, you need a, you know, a, like a website and online presence. Uh, a bit of an IT setup and, and you get started. Um, and from there, as you scale up, you start building your customers. It's all your personal efforts. You go out and about, you do networking, you do business development, um, and you start attracting your customers because you want to put yourself out there. People don't know your name, so you develop your, you know, a bit of a digital marketing strategy. So all those gonna need a bit of money. So you need to have some savings to get started. And that, and that could be a bit of a different situation where you have a startup concept where you need to convert that concept into a product and bring it into the market, which has few more stages. Um, and if it's if it might need manufacturing, which you know which you can outsource or you can import, or um, uh, you know you don't have to necessarily get into all the elements or all the stages of getting the product in the market, but it's going to need resources. Uh, from you to conceptualize an, conceptualize an idea to then enable to bring it in the market. So before you even, uh, you know, start taking sales orders or you go out, reach out to the customers to, to sell your product. So depending on that nature of the business, how many stages are involved, what sort of resources are involved, whether you're going to need staff up front to even produce uh, a, a product or a service delivery, it will determine the amount of money or capital you need right so and then when you go from that stage to the next stage which i mean even as a service-based business if it's gone beyond the capacity of one single person you're going to look at taking the staff and when you look at taking the first staff on you'll have to you know of course compromise on uh the take home the, as business owner you uh, you know you take so uh, and that sort of cycle starts again so you you know, you need to either save, build up some resources to be able to afford to pay a staff or you, you know, you reduce your um, sort of earning capacity from the business personally as a business owner. And then you, you know, take that dip and then build that back again. So, you know, each situation is different, but it's going to need some resources and the resources are going to need some funds to, to deploy to make the business cycle going. And that's where some of the planning comes in to make sure that you don't overcommit or that, you know, you have some level of um, predictability with regards to sales and revenue before you commit to these additional resources. Or and it could be a very slow process. You know, that's the organic sort of process. It's a very slow process. So if you, um, you know, sometimes, I mean, depending on the business model, it really kicks off and you're really getting good demand from the customers. You might get really busy um and you start generating decent income and profit and if any business which starts as a very profitable business will never have cash flow and capital problems because um you know from day one they will they can start sort of saving some money and then keep scaling up or even the healthy numbers they will have will have confidence and you can go to the banks and start you know loans you don't need to part with your equity uh, because if if you can obtain debt at a very cheap rate, you, why would you give up uh, equity in the business? Yeah. But you know, but the, if it's a very slow-paced process, then 
you perhaps think, okay, well, how do I scale it up to the level which generates decent income for me as a business owner? Uh, then, then you need to deploy, you know, sort of uh, scaling strategies which would need capital input because you need to ramp up your operations. Okay. So, so just before we get into, you know, um, options of raising capital um, and perhaps looking at investors, what advice would you give to business owners out there? You know, what what makes a scalable business model? You know, what do people need to look out for when, you know, because I'm sure there's business owners out there who have tried to scale and grow, but they didn't actually have, in essence, what would be a, a scalable model. What do people look out for there? Yeah, so a lot of these people, I mean, just for the sake of it, they think, okay, well, uh, I need to take my business to the next level without having an understanding of what the market appetite for their product or the service is. So they somehow a bit misinformed because they don't do their homework, they don't do the market research. And that's where a lot of strategic planning process comes into picture. Um, and this is uh, some of the studies which has come from the top sort of management schools um, uh, around the globe that if you're launching a startup, the the important aspect is not all the process you're following leading up to when you launch the product in the market. You need to reach out to the customer even before you start conceptualizing that idea to make it a commercial product. Because the acceptance of the product in the market and your customer response to that, it, it reduces a lot of risks uh, and increases your successful factors. and. If you build that market research understanding into your planning process, it, uh, it increases the confidence of all the stakeholders, whether that's going to be uh, the banks or the investors or early stage investors. Uh, so uh, it's important you understand, uh, when, of course, as a business owner, you're very excited about your business and a product, but you need to, to uh, reach out the market uh, do the market research, see the size of the industry, whether you're going to penetrate in the existing uh, in the size of the market or you're going to create a new market for your product or you're going to extend the, the size of the market. So a lot of time, the success of your business um, or scalability is going to depend on, on, on that market study because if it's already a saturated market, you're trying to penetrate in the same market, you you've got extensive level of competition which you have to fight so you'll have to spend a lot of money on marketing to to to, to sort of distinguish yourself yeah. to be able to sell yourself so it's important um, uh, to, to, for successful um, you know uh, outcome i think you said a couple of things there that, that are really important one is you know find your customer first you know yes. make sure make sure there's a customer there before you you, you build and, and hope they'll come make sure the customer's there first make sure there's a market opportunity and also you something you just touched on a little bit make sure that the the profitability is there and that you're not eating into the profit as you take on more customers yeah yeah you know, i think is another um common common area um where people might make mistakes when when they're looking at scaling up most definitely yeah yeah so dinesh you are an expert in many many of these um, areas but raising capital you know what what do we need to know about raising capital what are the in, what are the alternatives what if we can't raise capital what if we can't get a bank loan what, what what can we do to get that cash injection so that we can scale so let's go to some basics uh, on that you know um, we know starting a business or a startup or scaling a business is not going to come free we've, we've discussed some of the aspects okay what are the challenges why would you need you know even a basic amount of money to, to to make that first step you know but as the growth is planned you may you know need to hire staff you may need to deploy new technology uh, acquire some equipment and facilities and uh, create some systems and processes depending on the nature nature of the business. So how are you going to find the money to, to invest for growth? So, you know, as a basic, you know, sort of a concept, I really um, uh, sort of believe in, in bootstrapping, if you heard that terminology, you know, the bootstrapping yep. <laughs> is building a company from ground up, nothing but from your personal savings, because that inculcates the best level of financial discipline that, you know, how you're going to uh, resource and manage the funds. Um, and sometimes with the luck, you know, the cash starts coming in from your first sales. 
um, but if you following that bootstrapping um, you know you gradually build up the, but the mm-hmm. downside with that is that uh, it takes it, it's a very slow process you know yeah. but, but if you want to build up and take your time to take that journey to to build the business up to a level where it has achieved certain milestones then you can apply more aggressive uh you know scaling capital in production strategies to take it to the next level but you know okay what are the alternatives if we, if the bootstrapping you know if you're not having enough what you need to get started you know okay you reach out to family friends your private investors in your network so it's um, you know someone who believes in you or someone who can trust you and has some confidence in your business acumen so you start collecting you know your sort of on funds through your personal savings your friends your family and you get started then you start going into the next levels where it needs you know a little bit more acumen a business acumen uh needs a little bit more confidence and needs much more planning reporting documentation uh is leading to outside investors so let's say the first stage is a uh, concept of sweat equity now the sweat equity is basically where you exchange equity for goods and services you know so the the startup expenses are going to be you you have business advisors uh, you're going to have to deploy staff you have, don't have the affordability to pay the wages so you create a sweat equity concept where you say okay i don't have the cash to pay i'm happy to uh, exchange some equity or give you early stage equity to those uh suppliers or those workers um who are happy to provide you all the resources which you need to to get started and and you provide an equity in exchange instead of for cash so but we need you of course need to be uh careful that um you know if you give up too much at the at the beginning then uh of course you you lose a lot of value which you planning to build as an entrepreneur uh the next option normally uh is seed funding now seed funding is uh, is sort of a type of financing design especially for startup uh, environment so you approach the investors with your with your innovative or ground breaking concept and you demonstrate how uh, it has the potential to become a very profitable business in the near term so and and so usually the seed funding means the investor gets in at an early stage of a startup and they give you capital for uh, or in exchange of a stake a stake in the business so again you still have to sell the concept uh, concept of the business the next stage which is um, a little bit more sophisticated and complex is angel investors or venture capitalists so they generally come a little bit later in the stage where it's not a seed funding but you um you've sort of achieved your first stage of business concept so they are they're slightly similar to seed funding but they usually um they could be available to only very promising startups who at least you know have uh, crossed this concept stage um so working with the with the venture capital capitalist and agent investors usually will mean that they will retain a stake in the business and they they also generally get involved by helping you to provide that business advice because mostly they are experienced business people business investors who've been um uh, been uh, in 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 that sort of game for a long period of time so you bring them not only for capital you bring them to bring their acumen on on your board or in your uh, in business matrix to to take you to the next level sometimes they are passive and they will they leave the entire management to to the entrepreneurial or to the owners um and they leave the strategic direction to you but depending on their stake and how much money they're putting in um they um you know they will might like to get involved in the management but having said that but most of the cases as i said in at that stage venture capitalist they would like to have a well established track record of either you you know uh, conceptualize the business or some sort of growth is already demonstrated and there's a strong potential moving forward Uh, and they might be typically looking for tech cup companies easily easily scalable um yeah, they are fast scalable uh, and their you know the the ratio of growth is is quite sort of um, phenomenal uh, you know generally the tech up tech companies because um it, it sort of shoots very fast and it can 
in, um, in be scaled very fast because generally uh, you know the tech environment you don't need a big sort of resource uh, you know premises and equipment and all yeah. the manufacturing so it, it can scale very fast but but there's a couple of other you know small little options where i mean at a very small scale whether um you look at where you struggling for some resourcing or initial capital government grants sometimes yeah you know it can get you um yeah. so it won't give you large sum of capital but you can have small injections or or breaks that could make a difference for your small business or a startup so you probably look for different type of grants or assistance which, are, which sometimes can cover areas like marketing sales getting a proof of concept some import and export grants are generally there and then you where do you look for you start looking for your local state and federal uh, sort of areas where there might be some grants available for the small businesses um and as you start devoting some time to getting paperwork together for the application but we need to uh, keep in mind that the grants uh, usually don't need to be repaid so that's one if you manage to get that um, it really it's not a burden on you uh, which probably yeah. would in terms of a, a capital or, or, or a loan uh, starting pro, uh, point for looking for grants sometimes is, is the accelerating commercializing grant so that's really helpful sometimes you, if you're able to be eligible in that uh, you, uh, you know, people should look for that uh, ex accelerating commercialization grant. Sometimes you could be lucky in that. Uh, the other concept uh, which has become really popular in the last um, few years is the crowdsourced funding. You know, so if you are a little bit, a little more, you know, smart in that social space, um, you can get some capital in the early stages of your capital. You can, uh, you know, you can solicit the donations in the exchange of your products or investments in return uh, for a very small stake in your business so you know if you're happy to sell your business idea to the general public for the investment you could you know end up getting some capital you need um, uh, as well as generating some consumer interest at the same time your product so it kills two birds yeah with one stone because you're not only attracting some capital because those people are out there they're happy to help you in small denominations but the volume is so large on that platform that those small denominations adds up to, to a significant value which you might need and uh, there's been very uh, good success success stories um, so but the risk or the downside is that you know the crowdsource funding can expose the business to some sort of you know fickle nature of public interest and um, you just need to be mindful of some legal and tax sort of requirements before proceeding so it's always good to take a bit of a uh, and advice in that area so that you you don't sort of cross any legal boundaries. Uh, that's just a, that's an absolute minefield of information and opportunities, and yet it certainly pays to take to, to do your homework. But I mean, Dinesh, if we are looking to attract investors or to whether that be crowdfunding or angel um, investors or whatever it is that we're looking for, how do we? And it might even be a bank loan. <laughs> Um, but how? What do we need to do for our business? Um, what steps do we need to take? And what do we need to make it put in place so that we're attractive? And what? Yeah. So um, it's a it's a very relevant question um, because, irrespectively, how you're going to pitch yourself or you approach a, 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 an investor in the business or you go to the bank for for a finance, they this similar sort of criteria they need to look at the strength of the business so i see the first top most important aspect in this is an efficient and clear communication so you have to make sure that you explain your business idea very very succinctly right so you need to know your idea in depth enough so that you can communicate a very high level concept without going into too much detail at, at the first stage so imagine you, you know, you're not talking to a stranger at a party, you ask you, you know, what do you do? And so how can you make your business idea as simple and understandable um, as, you know, as possible for them? You know, it, that's your elevated pitch, you, whether you, so if you are in, you know, similar to being in a networking or a business function, explaining about your business. So you have to have that, develop that elevated pitch, which means, um, you know, and then that succinct summary will, will, you know, gradually take, you know, pride of the place in, in introduction of your business plan, which then you need to show to your bank or investors 
uh, when you're seeking funds. So you need to really spend some time to get it right. Uh, then, of course, you have to, you know, uh, prepare your pitch documents, your investor pack, which includes the business concept, financial forecast, strategic direction, market research, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you have to sell all that, right? So that's where every business owner or entrepreneur has to wear a hat of a salesman. You know, your business development, your networking, your public speaking, all come in, in, in play to, to make it a successful pitch. So I don't think in the whole life journey of a business person, you stop selling, you know, you start with selling the concept of your, of your business to pitch to the investors or going to the bank and then uh, uh, pitching to your uh, to your uh, to your end consumers and pitching to your team, right? Because you're selling always your yourself um, to, to 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 all of them. Uh, but you know, to give the the audience the three sort of main tips um, in this space, um, I would say that you ensure that you can explain your idea clearly and you prepare for all the possible questions. Uh, that's number one. Number two, spend some time documenting your financial projections and and consider all the options for the investment and finance uh, before before making any critical sort of decisions. How you know what options you you're going to accept in terms of uh, the, how they'll present in front of you, and uh, and take and seek professional advice, which is which is very important. Um, uh, you know, in early stages to set the path right. I think um, it made me laugh when you talk about um, uh, we ever going to stop selling. <laughs> we're, we're salespeople whether we like it or not every single day. Um, but you gave us some really, really valuable information there and there's a lot to think about for someone who is ready to um, either have one of those tech startups and looking for investors or if they're a, um, a new business bootstrapping or if you're someone to get to the next level. Um, and we've covered some really important points, but I think just before we wrap up, um, Dinesh, you know, what is, where, where does people, where do people get started around, I want to grow and I want to scale, but there are so many different ways that you can grow your business or scale your business. There are so many different structures, you know, where, where does somebody start um, at that process? I want to grow, I've got a concept. What was the very first couple of steps they have to take um, to, to look at how they're going to grow? I think educating yourself by surrounding yourself in an environment of where everyone is thinking in the same sort of uh, uh, direction, you know. So uh, if you get yourself into a, a skip space cube environment, of if you start going and educating yourself in um, in sort of platforms like Perth Angel Investors or similar platforms, because it's like being in a classroom, right? So you have to do an assignment. And you think, okay, where do I make a start? But when you're in a classroom or, you're in, or working in a workshop, you you exchange some ideas. Everyone is is particularly, you know, having these blinkers because they're th thinking about their business concept, their idea, right? But they're not thinking about uh, the commercialization aspect in, in very early stages. Mm -hmm. And that needs an education process that uh, how do you understand the commercialization aspect uh, alongside developing your business concept and, and and it's an education process and you're probably hardly going to get that in sort of universities you, you you need to be in that environment so I suggest you you uh, immerse yourself in that environment um, and the way you start sort of workshopping some ideas and then you start developing a business concept and you understand you know the business planning what other people are doing what sort of mistakes they've made you can learn from each other and you put or you start putting all that in a planning process whether you you do that by drawing up on a whiteboard or you you know on a on a butcher paper or or whatever uh, the, the thing is but if you start you know immersing yourself in the right in, in the right platform in the round the right environment and surround yourself with the people who, who help happy to help um, by by sharing their knowledge and wisdom and experience with you uh, I think that that's a very good starting point. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dinesh. Again, I think it's absolutely invaluable. The right people, the right training, the right environment, we can achieve anything. Um, but do our homework, talk to other people, 
find out all the different ways we can grow, how is it going to be profitable, do our planning and don't rush in, you know, do our proper planning, our proper research to make sure that we get it right um, first time. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Dinesh. This has been absolutely exceptional. Uh, I'm really looking forward to um, sharing it and it's going to be helpful to a lot of business owners out there who are wondering where do we start? What do we have to think about? Thank you, Lorraine. My pleasure. Always, uh, always available to help the upcoming businesses and the entrepreneurs. So um, uh, I feel privileged to be part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dinesh. I'll speak soon. Bye. Bye.